the podcast from hell is a member of the Queen City Podcast Network, powered by Ortho Carolina. Now offering video visits so you can take control of your orthopedic care from the comfort of your home. Schedule online at orthocarolina.com. Ortho Carolina, you improved. Please stand clear of the closing door. Going down. So anyway, like I was saying, he's sort of like the goat, Dave Barry. I don't know who that is. Well, I imagine Dave Barry. The Bee Gees? No, Bee Gees? no, no, no. That's um, <laughs> Katy Perry. No, that's, that's not who that is. Barry Gibb. Oh, yeah. yeah it's like the goat, Barry Gibb. You know, uh, Bee Gees stands for <gasps> Brothers Gibb. That's not true. It's uh, it's true. BGs, yeah. And coincidentally, Dave Grohl did uh, cover versions of BG songs and called them the DGs for Dave Grohl. You know, I like I like the Brothers Gib. My favorite one is the one where the witch came, <laughs> and then they sang a song about a fever that always strikes on the seventh night. Are you thinking of uh, Brothers Grimm? Hmm? Different. Hmm. We should get them on as guests. Mm. <laughs> no? Nah. Okay. Yeah, those guys, they wrote some shit. The Brothers Gibb? No, the Brothers Grimm. Oh, yeah. I mean, they are, if you think about it, this is just some twisted guys. They are, especially if you think about the fact that uh, they added the violence <laughs> for the children. <laughs> A lot of people would say, be like, oh, you know, the original one is way more violent. And it's like, yeah, that's because they took the sex out of the stories and um, uh, read assault <laughs> out of the stories and they say, what would the kids like? I don't know, violence. More, more violence right? And that's when people get their eyes gouged out and their heads cut off and then they put on hot iron sneakers exactly. to dance in. Exactly. And, and everybody's all up in arms. Oh, you can't do that to the Little Mermaid because then it's different than the original. I'm like, bitch, in the original, she killed herself. My favorite. That wasn't Brothers per- Grimm, though. That was, uh, that was Hans, a cons- Christian, Hans Christian Anderson. Hans uh, what? Hans Christian Anderson. It's just going blank. I'm sorry, just Hans Anderson. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yes, Brothers Gib? Grimm. No, oh, we're still man. in Brothers Grimm. Brothers Gibb, though, however, uh, they also, as almost as prolific, if yeah. you really think about it. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it. I started a joke, and it's so like deep and just weird. Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's almost as if their their work is perennial and is always staying alive. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. <laughs> did you see what I did yeah, there? Yeah, I see what you did there. Well, you can tell by the way that I use my talk that we are ready to start our episode. Excellent. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast from hell. What did that have to do with a goat? Oh, it's like a uh, goat berry gib. Okay. <laughs> For those of you who are just now joining us, my name is Kel, and I've been damned to hell and cursed to record a podcast for all eternity. You can turn the screen. I'm not one to lament my lot in life. Or afterlife. So I've decided to make this the best damned podcast that anyone has ever heard. It was a fast podcast. It was a lean podcast. It was the best damn podcast that anyone had ever podcast. Is that? Oh, it's BG's? a song. That's BG's? No, that's uh, so. ACDC. By anyone, I mean the damned souls who have been cursed to listen to podcasts for all eternity. I seek each week. To motivate and inspire those poor unfortunate souls. Giggle. And make their afterlife just a little bit better. I meant to push the giggle button. I just say giggle. I apologize. Why do we have a giggle button? It's next to the burp belt button. 
Is We're it, just next to the cough button. Is it to cause you to giggle and cough and burp? Can, can, or? I, can I tell you? Please. I've been too afraid to, to push it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's all start today. Oh, okay. No, we'll save that for... Woo, save it for a live episode. <laughs> oh, you know... I'm I don't gonna have know. to put all this stuff that I do in post in pre, and that's gonna be difficult. <laughs> I just I think about how much work it is it takes to get our episodes just exactly perfect. It is and a lot. Right. There's a lot that goes into. There's the pre-production meeting, the, the pre pre-production meeting, pre-pro, pre-pro, <laughs> and then there's the pro, and then there's the post pre-production meeting. Yeah, and then there's the deduction meeting. That's right. And then you show up at some point. And then I'm here, and then we have the and post show, And then we have pro, all the post-production that goes the into party, it. The party, the after-party. What? The after-after-party. We have an after-party? Yeah, you're here in the hotel lobby. After the party is the... The after-party. <laughs> is the after-party? Yeah. And after the party is the... Hotel lobby. And what about after that? Ah, uh, then I go to sleep. <laughs> I got <laughs> stuff to do, okay? I got yard works. All kinds of things. All right. Well, ain't no party like a podcast from hell party. So as a podcast from hell party, last about thirty five minutes right tops. Right. So I just I'm a little concerned. I know we said we would do a, a live show, and Beelzebub Pubs looks like it, they've gotten the permits. They're going to be able to open, but I just I don't I know don't that know. we're I ready. bought a I've had an advertisement for a show at Beelzebub Pubs, um, and I saw it, and I saw well, that looks like something I would see, and I got on. The um, ticket uh-huh. website. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I got on there, and I bought tickets, and uh, I was like, you want to buy insurance for those tickets? And I, I thought, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why do I need insurance for these tickets? Yeah. Why are you asking me? What kind of show are you going and to? You I, need insurance. And then I looked on it, and it was like, uh, you know... You know how, like, there's, like, one specific thing that you might be particularly concerned about right now? Wait, click here, and we'll tell you about how the insurance for your tickets will be affected by this. And basically, I clicked on it, and it said, it ain't cover, son. <laughs> Good, tough, tough cookies. Cool story, bro. It was bad. <laughs> and so now... yeah. That's just made me feel even stronger that we we should just not do the live show. I don't think we're ready for the live show. I the don't know. I just feel like, don't try well, to talk I me bought, into it. I bought don't. my tickets for the podcast from hell episode live at Beelze Pubs. Oh, those tickets were for our show? Huh? And people are selling insurance for our show? Oh, well, hold on. We get a cut Oh, I didn't put two and two together. That's the name of our show. <laughs> Wait. You thought you were going to see another podcast oh, from hell? I thought I was going to see there. a cool podcast called Podcast from Hell. And then they just, because it, I'm sorry. I apologize. guys. It's, I don't usually say the name of the podcast. I say it every day. You say it. I, I say don't welcome say it. to the podcast from hell. I'm used to hearing it. And sometimes I forget. Did I hear that at work or did I hear that at home? And I forget who I've told what. What promises I've made. Well, maybe we could bribe so, uh, the FYI, counselor. they're. They're, they're selling tickets. Well, maybe we could bribe the Council of Nine to push that off a little bit, keep them from opening up. So we just got a little bit more time to prepare and make sure that it's right, because live is live. Yeah, it's not like usually. I mean, usually we have the whole script written out. We have guests planned months in advance. They come on the show. We right. give them the pre-prepared questions. They gave us the answers right. that we have screened ahead of time yes. so that we know it's appropriate for our audience. And uh, everything goes swimmingly, but when it's live, we fuck you. Yeah, I mean, who knows what could happen? So I might say a dirty word. <laughs> right? Then what happens? Is there going to be a cough button at the live show? What? what if I need to cough? I hope so. Or what if I can't cough and I need to? I don't know which what, what it, the button does. Well, maybe there'll be a giggle button and we could make it pretend like the audience is giggling. <laughs> No, that see, that's the whole point of the live is it's got to feel like a live show. It's got to be worth the money. How much were they charging for those tickets? Uh, well, it was fifty, and then uh, I was in the mezzanine. Oh, man, Did just, you know Piazza Pubs has a mezzanine? What they have a, they're putting in one uh, as when they reopen, right? I, I hope so because <laughs> I bought tickets for it, baby. <laughs> mezzanine. Don't get one behind a column. Get one that you got a clear view. I try to always get an aisle seat. I just, you know, uh, live makes me so nervous. I don't know how people do it when they just get up in front of a group and they uh, 
audience and they just talk off the cuff. Uh, and then Lynn Rosetto Casper's going to be there. What? Somebody. I don't know. <laughs> that name sounded famous. I know. Oh, I can't be funny on the fly, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know. And I can't. <laughs> And I can't inspire people if I'm not like fully prepared. What if I have like an Ashley Simpson moment? Oh goodness! What if you? Uh, oh, no, you mean what if the sound that I feed into your ear every day to tell you what to say doesn't go through, and you have to wing it, but then you realize you're not capable of it? No, I mean like, what if my sister is much more talented and beautiful oh. than I am? <laughs> is that the I mean. case? Yeah, my sister's gorgeous. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Okay. Wait, what are you Googling right nothing, now? Nothing. St- stop. T- put that down. Kale's stop typing. Kale's you, sister. Oh, you come on. You just Google Kel's sister. Is that what you just Googled? Yeah. All right. They didn't come up with much. <laughs> well, I mean, okay. I just figured if you're dating my daughter, yeah, maybe I should date your sister. I, we Listeners will remember, I was dating Rick's bastard daughter. <laughs> uh, I'm st- uh, please. Bastardess. Uh, <laughs> bastardess. Nikki, who was... Uh, Rick's estranged child from a dalliance with a bush. Mm. So Nikki was a part demon, part bush. Burning bush. It's a burning bush. That's right. Was it burning when you found it or was it burning bung, after? Bung, bung, bung. Uh, I will not did, comment. Did the, did the bush, well, did you catch, catch the bush on fire? I, for friction. <laughs> okay. Look, you rub two sticks together long enough and you're uh, bound to start okay. a fire, baby. Sorry I asked. I'm sorry I asked. hey yo. And so I was dating Rick's daughter, Nikki, for a while, and then I broke it off because I didn't want things to get too serious. I wanted to be able to focus on my career. Wouldn't you? Or she dropped me. I don't remember exactly how it oh, went. Okay, that's fine. So listeners will remember all that, though. Yeah, listeners will remember, so don't worry about it. And then listeners will remember that a couple episodes ago... We talked to Beelzebub, Pub, and we said that we would do a live show when he we reopened. Were, and obviously, we weren't re- prepared for that. We were that. not prepared for that. So we it settled. We're going to see if we can bribe the Council of Nine and get them to push those permits off, just until we're ready. Just to, Not forever, just until we're ready. If there's anything I learned from the Senator brothers, there's nothing they love more than bureaucracy. Listeners will remember that the Council of Nine is made up of beings that are half- Centaur and half Minotaur or Senator. Senator, and that they are somewhat bribable, and so we bribed a Senator. They are extraordinarily bribable. <laughs> yes. They left with a vinegar and some flat rounds last week, and uh, we, I feel like we basically got car blanche, baby. <laughs> I gave one $5, and he, uh, he rated, reviewed, and subscribed. Is that true? Yeah, it counts. If it's paid, it still counts. Well, I would wonder if we gave $5 to each of the listeners. Huh? To rate, review, and subscribe. Oh, uh, who has twenty dollars to spare? <laughs> ah, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> okay. Um. Yes. Yeah, so I, we're going to push that off. That's more to come on that later. Mordecai we're on not that? Ready. Mordecai on that. Oh, Mordecai. That's uh, what I always say when I want to not when I want to avoid something. I mention Johnny Depp's worst movie. So no, that's Mordecai. Huh? Huh? What? Welcome to the podcast from the. Did oh, we I'm done that already. <laughs> Let's oh, go to... Uh, oh, thank fuck, because I <laughs> thought I was having some weird vinegar <laughs> prolapses. Yeah, let's uh, let's go to our sponsor, and then we're going to come back. We've got a fantastic guest. You've been listening to the podcast from here, brought to you by Viable Senators. Hey, you want to get stuff done? You want to block a bridge? You want to build a bridge? You want to close down the rec center so those kids can't put on those inspiring musicals once every 20 to 30 years? Well, don't you fear, because you can bribe a senator. That's right. With just $5, some vinegars, and pictures of him with his mistress, <laughs> you can get whatever you want done. You. C- we are going to um, uh, build a wall and uh, make worse hell pay for it. Yeah. Uh, uh, we're uh, gonna build a giant trench and make better hell pay for it. Uh, we are um, uh, gonna build a uh, giant trebuchet and uh, 
launch worse hell into the atmosphere. I have to respectfully disagree with my brother. We're going to build a giant catapult and launch better hell into the undersphere. We are um, uh, going to build a giant moat around worse hell and fill it full of alligators and fire and shit. I see that I've brought my brother over to the side of a giant trench around hell. Thank you very much for your compromise. It is that easy. You could just you give him five bucks and some vinegars and pictures of them with their mistress and they basically do whatever you want. Oh, hey, would you guys mind um, rating, review, and subscribe on our little podcast here? Um, uh, um, uh, well, I yes, guess you I have guess me I, over uh, a barrel. Mm. Bribable senators. And we are back. Wow, that's... Uh, never thought I'd hear from them again. Yeah, neither did our listeners. I hoped so. I would never hear from them again. <laughs> but we are moving ahead and moving on. We have a great Moving guest. right along. Moving right along. We've got our great guest, and guess what, Rick? What? Our guest is already here with us. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, let me get this out here. Mm-hmm. See what I've got here? All right. You said... I don't know. How would you do that? A bottle, it's a, a jug. It's a it's a teapot, technically. Yeah, it looks like a teapot. Yeah, but watch what happens when I rub it. <laughs> Hold on. You gotta you gotta rub it pretty good. You, you get a lot of friction going. Yeah, you gotta rub it the right way. Oh. oh. Guess what's gonna happen? What? Oh, it's, hold on, it's coming. Hold on. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> Sorry, but you really, you really gotta rub it. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, there we go. Poof. Hey. Welcome to me. <laughs> Welcome to you. Welcome to the podcast from hell. Thank you. Please introduce yourself. I am Ashbagal. <laughs> That's uh, an interesting name. I'm sorry, Ash Ashbagash. Ashbagash. <laughs> No, I am oh. Ashbagal. Oh, Ashbagal. Ashbagal? Yeah, yes. No, no. Ashbagal, Rick. Yes. Don't be rude. Ashbagal, Rick. Ashbagal, and Ashbagal, you are a... Genius. Genie. No. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. You're a genius? Mm, more like Jackass. <laughs> Rick. I heard rude. that. Yes, I am a genius. Okay, I mean, that's a little, uh, and a little uppity. Is <laughs> I didn't say say a genie. Yes, right? that is, you may call me a genie. Also known as a... Bastard. D- no. Correct. <laughs> also known as a djinn? A d- oh, it's just pronounced djinn. Djinn? Djinn. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was... I could use a djinn. The djinn. No, the D is not... It, you don't pronounce it all <laughs> okay. the way. It's sort of the just... D is like silence. The tip of the tongue and the back of the taint. Djinn. <laughs> So uh, you are a gin. I am a gin. See, Rick, the, that's why he came out of the teapot when teapot? I rubbed it real good. I'm not following, Gail. Well, you, you said it's time for a guest, and I rubbed yeah. one out. And, <laughs> <laughs> and now we have a guest. Isn't that crazy how that works? And that's how it works, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I am here to grant your wishes. Oh, he's a wish granting yes, gin. Yes, I am a wish granting gin. Oh, that's fantastic. I'm so excited. It's a little bombastic. <laughs> what, you... I would say it's very fantastic. <laughs> okay. Tell us a we little about yourself, it. Ash Ash uh, Ashbagal. Ash, Ashbagal. Ashbagal. I'm going to write that down so I don't forget it. What does your Please. mother call you, Ashbagal? <laughs> My mother calls me Ashbagal. Ashbagal. Okay, that's what I'm going to call you. Please do. Ashbagal, how long have you been a... Is it is the proper term genie? Is it gin? Is it the gin? Is it... It's, well, it's definitely genius. not the gin. Okay. So genie, gin, genius. Okay. You keep leaning towards genius, so... Great how long have you been dick. one of those? No. Um, how long have you been one of those? Oh, uh, let's see. Maybe... Nine thousand years. Wow, that's right. That's got to be one of the oldest Quite guests we've had. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm like thirty-five thousand years old. The Pazuzu's twenty, thirty, sixty thousand years old. It's actually not that bad. 
Okay. It seemed like a lot to me. It seems like a lot to most people, but I see you are a very... Uh, Young? A special people with all these old guests who don't come out of lamps. <laughs> Well, you didn't come Speaking out of a lamp. Of, yeah, I was going to say, you, you didn't come out, out of a teapot. teapot. What are the kind of things you come out of? It's, well, it's just the teapot. I was trapped in the teapot. I, I belong with this cursed t- teapot. Oh, no, a cursed teapot? Yes, you will forever be drawn to the teapot, and it will bring you fortune and misfortune. Oh, I will be drawn to the teapot? Yes, you just can't get enough. I just can't get enough. I heard, imagine that, imagine that. I heard that you could also, uh, that genies got wrapped up in rugs, blankets, like basically anything a you, rug, get, uh, you can a get. A ring, to. a bracelet, a ring? piece of jewelry, wow. an old painting of a genie. Uh, you are easy to trap. Plastic bottle. Maybe not the oldest guest we've had, but the easiest to trap guest. Yes. I love <laughs> trap. You, oh, you love the trap? Yes. That, that's like why you're so easy to trap. Do you like like getting stuck in the bottles? Do you like it in there? You know, it's not so bad because I have my quiet times and I get to reflect on my life as a gene. I remember one of the... Legends of the genies that I'm familiar with. Uh, inside the bottle, there was like um, couches and lots, pillows. Yes, that is like what my inside of my teapot looks like. Really? There's lots of couches and pillows, and sometimes an astronaut will visit me. <laughs> oh, an astronaut. That's yes. very fancy. Yes. And uh, have you ever been trapped in a barrel? Uh, no. No? If you did, would it be called a gin barrel? Uh, no, but I see what you did there. <laughs> okay. No, I have been in this teapot since 1846. Wow. Yes, an Englishman brought me home in a ring, and he banished me with the help of several imams, and I left uh, the cursed ring and entered the teapot in the corner. Oh, and I released you. Now, yes. So, I mean, that good luck would getting rid of me. Make you my an offer I can't refuse. You can no. my, your, your what? Say it. I, I mean, I don't say it. I don't know what the uh, right I term is. I don't know what the proper term is, but that I wish you, you would. You would. I be, wish I you would. would be your. I wish you would. <laughs> um, I wish you wouldn't. <laughs> oh wow! Why is it so hot in here? Um... Welcome to hell. Master. <laughs> Master? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> no? No. Well, well, what's the proper term? It would, uh, you would be my, uh, how do you say, my, um, the subject of my fury. Oh. Yes. Now oh. I will uh, grant your wishes. And yeah, grant my wishes. Yes, I would grant your wishes, grant and then wishes. I will haunt you for the rest of your life until you probably commit suicide or do okay. something like that. Rick, I need you to help make sure mm-hmm. that I don't accidentally say I, I wish for something and then then say. Something. What was that? No, I was. I'm not. I'm not saying okay. those words. I'm asking Rick to help keep me honest and make sure that I don't accidentally wish for something that I don't want. Okay. All right. So hypothetically, yes. if I were to, and I'm not, but if I were to say... Oh, okay. I wouldn't say it. Rick, why don't you say oh, okay. what my question is, and then that way... Well, what was your question? You're not saying it. Well, if I could say it to you, I would be saying it out loud. What's your, hold on. Hold on. I, we'll, we'll do a fitty fitty. Hold sure. on. How about this? How about this? What if Kale were to say... I wish I was rich. What would happen then? Would I get like lots and lots of money? No, now you are Rick and Rich. Welcome to the Rick and Rich podcast. (laughs) Oh, I see. Ding, 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 ding. You would turn my wish around. Yes, monkey paw style. (laughs) Monkey paw me. Oh, yes. I hate getting monkey paw. I give you that monkey fist. (laughs) (laughs) When I first got to hell, I got monkey pawed a lot. Oh yeah. Those uh, are the days. <laughs> uh, okay, so I gotta I gotta be smart about how I ask for my wish. Um, 
Let me just uh, and let me hyper- let me remind you yes. that when you receive a wish, you then automatically become beholden to me, and I can haunt you in your dreams. Uh-huh. I follow you home. I curse you. Your whole family dies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I get anything I wish. Sure. Any- <laughs> I wish at all. Hmm, wow. Okay, hold on. Yeah. I feel like you're getting trapped. Wait. Oh, hold on. Actually, wait a minute. You did. I don't. <laughs> Do, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Do you love your family? Uh, Do you have loved ones? Theoretically, like a, yeah. You like a cat or something? You don't want to get hurt? Yes, yes. <laughs> theoretically, that's nice. That I know. I know when uh, Lucille says, "Oh, Ricky, do you love me?" and I say, "Theoretically." <laughs> Yes, it always gets your exactly, motor running. Exactly like that. So you think, Rick, that it's this is a trap? It's a win-win. Oh, it's it's a win-win. I mean, you're dead. What's he gonna do? I don't know. It sounds like I'm sure. Do you know? I ever, I can hear you. <laughs> he can hear us, Rick. We're not I, being, I know. We're not I'm not trying to hide. Man, I sure do wish that we could. Oh, I almost, uh, oh, I almost, almost. I, oh, you almost got me. I think he just couldn't think of anything to wish for. <laughs> oh, I really could use a wish right now. Wish right now. Wish right now. Um, okay, so uh, again, theoretically, Hi, as an example, uh, Rick, take the first part, please. Okay. Kale might say, I wish I were happy. Yeah, oh, okay, well, you know, that is sort of the same as the last one because there is, in fact, a man named Happy, and you could be, your name would be Happy. Oh, hmm. would I be Happy Gilmore or would I be the little dwarf Happy? Uh, no, you would be a 14 year old little ocean boy. Oh. Named Happy Sinsenbach. <laughs> little boy. I've always wanted to be Laotian. From the ocean? <laughs> no, Laotian. Oh, okay. I used that right. <laughs> Okay, but you're saying that there's a flip side, a bad side to the wish. Never. I wouldn't say this. You know, I had a... But um, it's true, yes, there is. I mean, it will bite you in your ass. I had a, a wish-granting uh, crocodile in here one time. Yeah, it was a snake. Oh, it was a snake. Yeah, thank you. I it, had, it was a giant anaconda, and it had feathers. It had feathers. This is what threw me. I forgot it had feathers. Um, yeah, and I pretty much had all the wishes I wanted. And I just got, ended up like a bunch of Amazon here. boxes. We had a lot of boxes, a whiteboard. It became a brown board. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. So you know what, Rick? I I think I'm going to pass up this opportunity for to have a wish. I am going to put the genie back in the bottle, and I'm going to let somebody else have this opportunity. I ooh. Oh, would that I could, but you know, you can't put the genie back in the bottle. It's a phrase, you know. <laughs> you can't put the genie back in the bottle. Um, I mean, that's a metaphor. You, you got it's a it metaphor. In the bottle. It's a metaphor, of course, because, you know, you can't put the genie back into <laughs> the teapot. I just have to trick case. you into getting into some oh, kind of sure. container. Oh, sure. Yes, you could trick me, and I would go in there, and i say, oh, no, and then I would be trapped. Okay, all right. Uh, super. Hey, um, Al- Algernon. Ashbagal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as it's so disrespectful. He would does you, it on purpose. Would you like uh, some of these crisps that we have here? Oh, uh, do you mean flat rounds? Yeah, these flat rounds. These are flat round brand crisps. Oh, those look tasty. Let me just open the box here. Just reach right into the box. Oh, okay. They lo- oh, those look like they're from Baldi. <laughs> yes, they are. I from mean, Baldi. you could have got. I mean, not. Can I be honest? They taste just as good as name brand. Right. Yeah, they're exactly as good. Okay. Well, in. let me reach in. Reach here in, and get real one deep. Of reach in, real deep. Rick, flat push. Rounds. Rick, push. Yeah, yeah. Push! Rick. Okay. You son of a bitch! Rick, guess what I got in this box? It's, a, it's Ashbegale. It's Ashbegale. I got a genie in a box of crisps. Oh. All right. Uh, hey, I'm gonna. What? I'm gonna send this to Nikki, my ex. <laughs> Wait, no, that's my daughter. Yeah, but yeah, but she's my ex. Why did you send it to Zoe Deschanel? <laughs> I. Oh, I, you think I there's still a like chance you might get back together? Oh, Zoe fuck Deschanel. you, Kale. Okay. Get back together. So, if you would just, uh, I'm gonna wrap that up and send uh, that on to. Um, okay. To I, pre- I appreciate that. Well, that was a close one. You almost got. Gin pun. Huh? I don't know. <laughs> mm. You know, you know what my favorite drink is. Uh, what's that? Gin rummy. 
<laughs> uh, hey, you know what goes good with crisps? Uh, the gin and juice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're listening to the Podcast from Hell, part of the Queen City Podcast Network, starring K-11 says... <laughs> All right, well, it's me again. Uh, I hate to tell you that the Queen City Podcast Festival has been canceled. Literally no one saw this happening. But uh, hey, at least it was them and not us. So technically, we're still on the books for this. And that's a win as far as I'm concerned. So we'll see you next time, and maybe you'll see us live somewhere, maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, I'll see you in hell. Kale Evans as Kale the Damned. Jacob Brayton as Rick the Super Demon. Music by Josh Brayton. Gin pun. Huh? I don't know. <laughs> mm. You know, you know my favorite drinkies. Uh, what's that? Gin rummy. <laughs> uh, hey, you know what goes good with crisps? Uh, the gin and juice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> gin puns.